Hi guys, welcome back to the workbench. I wanted to do a quick video. It was brought to my attention and I, I, I kind of knew this. It just kind of kept slipping my mind to keep doing a video. I never did a video on how to assemble XLR3. Now, it's similar to XLR4 um, and kind of has the same form factor, but it doesn't go together exactly the same way. So, I've got everything in front of me to build an XLR3, at least all the main components. And I'm going to go through real quick and show you the assembly steps and the basic process on how you want to put this thing together. I'm not going to do the wiring or anything like that. I'm just going to give you kind of the guidelines and the tips, tricks, and hints that I know. So, I've got several pieces of hardware that are going to come with the kit. You're going to have the carbon bits, of course, but you're going to also have some standoffs. Um, these are my 20 millimeter orange standoffs, and you'll have one 28 millimeter standoff that's also M3. You're also going to get some six or seven millimeter long M3 screws, about six of them. You'll get four eight millimeter long M3 screws, and for 12 millimeter long M3 screws. Those are all steel. You'll also get an arrangement of nylon, black standoffs, and nuts. So, to start this off, of course you're gonna need all your normal FPV gear, HS1177 camera or equivalent. They all mount fairly similarly, so this is the one it's designed for, which is 600 TVL Fox here version. Um, but you can use other versions. A lot of them pretty much bolt in the same way. You're going to need a pigtail SMA extension on your VTX, so that's a good thing to have. And it fits most of the standard sizes. This one's like an FX798 or 99T type one that's been rebranded. You're going to need your PDB, which in this case I'll be demonstrating with the prototype Space Cowboy Drone Design 3 inch PDB, which has a built in XT30 at a right angle. And of course, you're going to need a flight control board, not to mention your receiver for your RC gear. But let's start off with the main plate. So, here's the main plate. And the first thing you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and grab those long 12 millimeter screws. There's four of them, like I said before. You're also going to go ahead and get all your nylon hardware ready because you're going to use that next. So, you want to take those 12 millimeter screws, stick them through the hole right here. You can see there's four of those holes. Those are for the flight control and PDB stack. So you start off by putting one screw through, then you go ahead and you grab a nylon nut. And this is going to space your PDB off the carbon so that it's not touching. And you just want to snug that up with a, your hand and an Allen wrench. You don't necessarily need to use uh, a set of pliers or anything on that. It just needs to be a little bit snug. Repeat that three more times and then we'll be ready to mount the PDB. So I'm going to do that real quick and we'll come back in a second. Ta-da! And there we go. So we've got our four screws in there with the nylon nuts and that's going to be the standoffs for the PDB and the flight controller stack. So this is a good time if you have your battery strapped to go ahead and thread it through. It's just easier to do it first. Um, and you're going to go ahead and stack your PDB on there like so, however oriented you want it to be. Um, and of course, the next step after you do that, I would suggest go ahead and take your nylon standoffs. Go ahead and put them down to keep your board captured. And this is a good stage to start wiring everything, which I think most of you guys already know this and do this. This is the way I assemble things, is I put the PDB down, then I start installing my speed controls and my motors, and wire everything in place. That's typically how I build these little 3 inchers and most of my other size quads too. Um, so let's just skip that step because I'm not going to show you how to solder and, but you, you know pretty much ESC on the arm with your motor. This frame fits 1306s and 1407s. Um, unfortunately it doesn't fit the T-Motor F20s any longer unless you want to mod it. Basically what T-Motor did was they switched from M2 screws to M2.5, which is really odd because no one else is doing that. So if you're using new T-Motor F20s, you will have to drill the holes out slightly bigger to make the screws fit. But they are usable. But to be honest, uh, considering what's out there on the market, I would prefer, I would suggest you go with a Brother Hobby 1407 or a Rotor Geeks 1407 or an X Nova. Um, they all use the same mounting pattern and M2 hardware. 
and they're all powerful motors. In fact, most of those motors that I just listed are more powerful than the F20s from what, I, what I've experienced. So anyways, moving on. Let's assume you've got all your motors, your speed controls, your power lead wired up, and you probably even got your FPV gear ready to go. All you gotta do is plop your flight controller down on top of the stack, put uh, the remaining four nylon nuts on there, and now I'm gonna show you how to assemble the pod that's gonna hold your FPV gear. So let's take this and move it out of the way. Let's clean up a couple of these that were emptied already. So for this step, you're gonna need the remaining screws and hardware. You're also gonna need the remaining carbon bits. So you got two side plates, VTX tail, SMA antenna mount, and this top plate. So to start with, go ahead and grab your VTX. And you're gonna go ahead and take this SMA extension and you're gonna go ahead and using some combination of those lock washers that come with it. I like to just use the serrated one. I don't like using the spring washer as much. Just go ahead and stick this through like so. So you can see, uh, put your nut on and thread it all the way down, of course. Snug it up pretty good because you don't want this thing moving around too much. I'm just gonna hand tighten it for the purpose of this. And that's going to get you prepped. You want to have this pre-assembled um, because you're going to have to insert it and you won't be able to thread the SMA cable through the opening very easily um, if you don't do this ahead of time. So next step, moving on to the top plate. We have to do a little bit of prep here first before we put anything else together too. So you're going to need the four uh, orange standoffs. You really only need two of them for this part actually. And you want to grab the six um, M3 by 7 millimeter screws and the first thing you want to do is you want to put two standoffs on these back two holes and you'll see why in a little bit once I start assembling things I'll explain it's basically an ordered assembly step that you need to do in order to get this whole thing together again I'm just gonna hand snug these right so we're gonna go ahead for the purpose of this tutorial I'm not gonna tighten anything too much because I'm not really building this I'm just kind of demonstrating how it goes together. So, you've got the two back ones assembled. Now the next step is to go ahead and get your side plates. Now, you're gonna have two of these. They're identical, doesn't matter which one you use left or right. Either way, you're gonna take the black 28 millimeter standoff and we're gonna thread it into this back hole with one of those same seven millimeter screws. So. We'll go ahead and put it like this, right? Do a little turn. So, uh, next step, Let's go ahead and grab that top plate you assembled, okay? And basically, you're gonna put it below here, bring it up, and you're gonna turn it in. And you can see it kind of sits in the slot like this. So you can see how that top plate kind of slots in. And you want the standoff, the black standoff, to go on the inner part of it back here. So you can see how this assembles, right? Make sense? This is why you want to have the SMA pre-assembled. You're going to go ahead and take the SMA holder, tail piece, and you're going to tab it into the slot right here, which can be difficult on camera. But you can see just tabs in there there'll be some tension on this that holds it um, keeps it from moving too much although you can file it and make it loose if you want it's no big deal you're gonna go ahead and take the other side which you probably want to do is go ahead and move that out of the way we're gonna go ahead and take the other side and similarly we're gonna turn it like this and we're gonna bring it around and kind of tab everything together. So you can see I've tabbed it in, I've tabbed it in, and then we're going to put this one screw in the back so you can just kind of squeeze it here by the tail. That'll hold it together while you're doing this. Put the screw in. Go ahead and get it started. Snug it down. And then the next step I would suggest is go ahead and take your VTX and 
wrap your SMA extension around it and if you can look closely you can see there's a zip tie hole on two spots on both sides and you can wrap a zip ties around to hold your BTX down with your SMA extension. Now of course I got this upside down it's probably not a good example. You want to go ahead and wrap it so that your buttons your buttons or your dip switches are on top. Those are going to be pretty fairly well protected because of the side of the frame rails when you have the zip tied down. That will keep them protected but still give you access to them which is really nice because that makes changing channels at the field really easily at races especially. So, we've got the pod and uh, the last piece that we have to put in there is the camera. So, uh, this part's a little bit tricky and you're going to be putting a little bit of force on the carbon to kind of spread it open. But it's not that hard. So, uh, you know, if you're having a hard time with this, just take your time and be gentle. Um, once you do it a couple times like I have, it becomes easy. Obviously, make sure you have your camera oriented in the right direction, which the print on the back kind of tells you which side's up. So it says at Mini FPV Cam, this is the top up here, and the bottom is at the connector. Uh, if your lettering is upside down, then your camera is upside down. So make sure you pay attention to that. So we're going to take that. We're going to slip it in between the side rails. Okay. Now, this is, like I said, a little bit tricky. What we're going to do is we're basically going to bow it out like this. Um, and you're going to push the camera into the slot and kind of snap it in. So you're not going to be able to see this too well on camera as I do it, I don't think. So let's just go for it. And then I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. Okay, well, here we go. We got it partially in. We're just going to push it down until we hear it snap into the groove. There, you might have heard that. I hope you heard it. So now I've got it snapped into the groove. You'll notice there's two positions. Now, uh, we didn't install these standoffs, and that's for a reason. Um, because it's kind of hard if you put this camera in the back to tighten the screws and it's still kind of a little bit in the way if it's in the front position. Uh, you can use either one depending on which lens you have. It's just meant to give you a little bit of clearance. The idea is that you want to get your roll bars to either line up with it or protrude depending on if you want to see them or not and how much angle you have on your camera. But in general that's what these are for. These are kind of like nerf bars to protect your lens a little bit, give you a little bit of crash resistance. Not guaranteeing you won't break the lens because that's hard to say, but um, you know, if you want extra protection, go ahead and scoot your camera back. So we've got it in. Go ahead and take the screws that are supplied with the camera and screw it in. And then you're pretty much almost done with this pod. You go ahead and uh, get your wiring put together. But the last thing you want to do is go ahead and take the remaining two seven millimeter screws once you've tightened your camera down uh, and kind of locked in your angle close to where you want it at least go ahead and put these front two standoffs on so you're going to have the pod built up at that point completely and the next step is just basically screwing it down to the bottom plate and connecting all your connectors for your FPV gear which you probably would have wired when you did the PDB wiring so here we go base plate with uh, assembled completely not shown here are ESCs and motors but you would have done that then you're going to take this assembly you can see there's two tabs here the two tabs slot in right here and right here so you can kind of see that's going to keep the carbon spread apart you might have to do a little bit of tweaking depending on how tight your camera is pulling those in but in most cases it just sits right down in there and you can see they tab in. All right. So now we take the remaining 8mm M3 screws, which are a little bit longer than the 7s, obviously, by a millimeter, and we thread them through the bottom in the four locations that don't have screw holes in them. You can do the front two, the back two, it doesn't matter what order you do these in ter terribly much. So just go at it however you want pretty easy pretty straightforward um, you know I think most people can figure this out um, and I think the video just kind of answers a couple questions um, that aren't obvious from the pictures so hopefully it makes it even easier for you guys to, to get these things together and uh, 
This actually took me a long time to kind of like come up with the idea on how to slot these carbon pieces together because I wanted to have the vertical plates, but um, I didn't have to have the traditional people put like a screw with a lock nut going through it to hold it down. I wanted to have this top plate kind of sandwich it down and I wanted them to stay spread apart. So that's where the idea to keep the two tabs on the bottom and the camera and the rear standoff kind of keep those two plates spaced apart while the top plate kind of clamps it down to the to the bottom plate. So now you can see you've got essentially an assembled XLR3. Now, if you're uh, an XLR4 SL owner and you bought the beta kit, it goes together exactly the same as this. The only difference is it has a bigger base plate for the four inch props, but it uses the same motors and same gear and it's pretty much the same thing. So that kit will probably be going to a regular release soon. Um, I feel like the beta kit's fine the way it is. I don't see any reason to change it. So uh, expect to see that change soon. But anyways, thanks for tuning in. That's how you put together XLR3 or an XLR4 SLL, SL in a nutshell. So uh, tune back in, especially for the next news, which will probably be about the PDBs. Thanks. Bye.